today we're going to take a look at the most famous of all the parables taught by Jesus during his ministry on earth, the parable of the prodigal son. But let's not just look at the mistakes made by the younger son in the story. Let's dig a little deeper and also explore the relationship between the father and the older son as well. Because though he was present with the father, the older son was no less rebellious. But before we go into the Word of God, I want you to take a look at the video of our work with the children in China. Providing education is such an important part of Konghi Ministries because it equips our children with the vision and the skills necessary to press ahead for a better future in spite of whatever background they may come from. Over the years, both Sun and I are passionate about the less fortunate children in China. And to date, we have built five schools and three hostels there and we provide many of these students with school supplies such as shoes, uniforms and stationery as well as basic living necessities. Jesus says, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these, you did it to me. So on behalf of these kids, Sun and I want to thank you for your general support that enables us to help them in China. I pray that you will continue to partner with us so that we can do even more for them. child will be again and have the chance to live their dream Thank
For many of us, the love of a father was distant, mysterious, and perhaps non-existent. Without a physical or understanding father, where do we turn? Through Kong Hee's series, Abba, The Father's Heart, you'll understand how the love of our Heavenly Father can change everything, giving you that desired connection and fulfillment. Please visit konghee.com and click on today's offer to get a copy of Kong's four-part message, Abba, the Father's Heart. These four messages will help you connect with the Son of God to understand and find a love that will give you comfort in any situation. Find this offer at konghee.com to get a copy for yourself or a friend. Abba, the Father's Heart. Find comfort through our loving God. Will you please turn your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 15? In the first part, we see the younger boy. He was rebellious. He was self-centered. And to him, the father was in the way of his pursuit, of his visions, his dreams, his desires. His father was cramping his style. So one day he demanded, he said, Dad, I want my inheritance now. Effectively, he was saying, I wish that you were already dead. You could give me what is rightfully mine. He was absolutely disrespectful, but he didn't care. The father could have kicked him out of the house, but he didn't. He loved him so much that he actually sold the land and divided to him his portion of his inheritance. One third of the estate was given to him. The younger son in verse 13 then set off for a distant country and there squandered his wealth in while living. He was partying. He was sleeping with prostitutes. He was living the high life. Eventually, the money ran out and he had to work with the pigs. Finally, the Bible says, Jesus says, he came to his senses. He said, I will humble myself. I will go back home to my dad and I will work as one of his servants. So in Luke 15 verse 20, he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The love and tenderness of the father broke his heart, the heart of this prodigal boy. Immediately he confessed, Father, 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 I have sinned, Father, Father. And before he could even complete his sentence and what he wanted to say, the dad gave him the best rope, which speaks of honor. The dad gave him a ring, which speaks of authority. The dad gave him sandals to wear. That means you are free. You don't have to be my servant. Because in those days, slaves do not wear shoes. Well, 
the father then killed the feathered calf and threw the biggest party ever for the entire village and the community. That was part one. And then part two begins. In came the older brother. Everybody turned to your neighbor and said, the older brother. <laughs> yeah. And when he came near the house, he heard music. He heard dancing. Now, Jesus, on purpose, called the older brother Presbyteros, where you get the word Presbyterian, which means he's an elder. He's a senior, a leader in the house of the father, if you like. He was obedient, dutiful, law-abiding. He was faithful, very hardworking, very respectable, a model son. This saintly elder brother brought no disgrace ever to the family, to the village, to the community. But yet, Jesus was trying to show us he was every bit as lost as his younger prodigal brother. But the father loved him deeply. So this older brother, he heard that the father had reinstated the younger brother and he was furious. So by refusing to go to the feast, he publicly embarrassed and demeaned his dad. It was a vote of no confidence to his father's action. So there's a twist in this story. You know, the wild rebellious younger brother who left the estate, is now back with the father in the house. And then the morally upright older brother who stayed in the house faithfully year after year after year now suddenly found himself out of the father's house. The outsider was now inside and the insider was now outside. What an irony, right? Well, this is an amazing story. But why did Jesus tell this parable in the first place? What was he trying to achieve by sharing this story? Jesus Christ was really speaking to a group of people. They were the Pharisees and scribes. Now, so let's backtrack to the first three verses, Luke 15 and verse 1. Then all the tax collectors and sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them. Jesus was seen befriending and fellowshipping and eating with well-known sinners, with worldly people of society, the drunkards, the prostitutes, the tax collectors, those that are living a life far, far away from God. Now, the Pharisees and scribes were the elders, the leaders, the workers in the temple, in the house of God. And they were very upset to see Jesus hang around those sinners. So Jesus now told them not one, but three parables. The third parable in the story is what we've been studying, the parable of the prodigal boy. Who's the brother's keeper? Who is the one that should look after the younger brother? Well, the older son. In fact, when the older boy saw his kid brother telling his dad to drop dead and give me my portion of the inheritance, he could have done something. He could have stepped in, which he should. But he did nothing. He kept very, very quiet. And how many of you know sometimes our silence can scream louder than anything else. If younger brother is going to get one third, guess what? I'm going to get the two third. I don't have to wait for daddy to die. I can get what is rightfully mine as well. Now the right thing for him to do was to help heal the rift, the broken relationship between the younger brother and his dad. But instead, this elder brother did nothing. Instead, he happily took his own share of the inheritance, which was twice as much as the younger brother had received. Now, he heard that the prodigal son had returned. The older brother was now filled 
with self-righteous indignation. He's angry. How could father reinstate this boy without any punishment whatsoever? So that's why the father had to go out to this angry, resentful older brother begging him to come into the feast because you know why? He is just as lost and just as rebellious as the younger brother. He is just as messed up as the younger kid. You see, but while the sin of the prodigal son was visible for all to see, he was drinking, he was boozing, he was sleeping around with prostitutes, the elder brother's rebellion was more dangerous. It can't be seen. It's in the heart, hidden, hardened, hypocritical. It was something that was inside his heart. Now listen to what the older brother said to his father in verse 29. All these years, I've been slaving for you. Father, you work me so hard in this house. You make me sacrifice so much for the house. You deprive me of a normal life. I can't do normal things that a family man could do. Notice why he said in verse 29, I have never disobeyed your orders. I have lived such a disciplined and morally strict and upright life. I have obeyed your commandments. I have crossed the T and dot the I. I have never disobeyed you. I have denied myself from all the fun and all the enjoyment out there in the world. And notice what he said. You never threw me a party. You never celebrated for me. Well, I guess nothing I do is ever good enough for you. Now, this is the elder brother speaking. Every word was dripping with anger, dripping with bitterness and resentment for his father. He may have remained in the father's house faithfully as a senior, as an elder, somebody who is always there every time the door opened. The last one out, the first one in, he didn't go off to a distant land, but he might as well be a million miles away from his dad because his heart was already alienated from him. He might as well be a million miles away because he had no relationship with his father. What season are we in right now, City Harvest Church? Come on, talk to me. We are in a year of relationship. And the most important relationship you and I have to establish and to anchor our soul in. It's a relationship with our Heavenly Father. This guy had no relationship with his father and he hated his own brother with such venom. Jesus was trying to tell the Pharisees and scribes, listen, the elder brother is just as lost because the issue here is not hard work. The issue here is not your strict obedience. The issue here is not all the sacrifices you have made for the house. The issue here is relationship. The heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. Somewhere while he was serving, somewhere while he was obeying, somewhere while he was learning to sacrifice, he lost his first love. He lost that love relationship with his dad. Friends, we are lost when we have no more love relationship with our Father. We may be working hard. You may be a cell leader. You may be a church staff. You may be a pastor. You may be a preacher. You may be sacrificing and obeying, and we can do all that, and there are great things to do. But when we have lost that relationship with our Heavenly Father, we are just as lost as those people that have never known Christ and we are in need of a savior. You see, we tend to think of being lost in very simplistic 
terms. If you're drinking, smoking, womanizing, you're lost. But let me tell you what's more dangerous, and that's what Jesus is trying to say. What's more dangerous is not the outward visible lostness, but the inward secret lostness of a hardened heart. Repentance must go deeper than just feeling sorry and regrets for all the bad things you have done. This younger brother came back to the house. He had a long list of wrongdoings. I mean, you name it, he did it. This guy was a rascal. He got so many things. He got to regret over, say sorry, confess, deal with it. The older brother got nothing in his list of wrongdoings. He said, Father, I've always obeyed you. I did nothing wrong. And the dad did not contradict him. He was close to perfect. Never drank, never smoked, never womanized. Not greedy, not materialistic, not avaricious. But he was far outside the feast of the Father's love. Wow. Listen, if all we do is just repent from the things that we have done wrong, we may just be elder brothers. If that's all we do, you know what, Kong? I used to take drugs, I used to smoke, I used to drink, I used to sleep around, and I'm no longer doing it. Praise God. Glad to hear that. But you may still just be an elder brother. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's talking about your friends, come on. (laughs) (laughs) True repentance is not just a turning from. True repentance is also a turning to. You see, it's not just, I turn away from this, but who are you turning to right now? In fact, that is what conversion is all about. The Greek word for conversion is epistrophal. It's a turning from sin and turning to a love relationship with God the Father. Jesus saying over here in Acts 26 verse 18, he says to open your eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. If there is a turning from, but not a turning to, we are just as lost. We are just as lost. Jesus came to be the way to bring us back to the Father. How many of you know you can get on the highway, you can get on the freeway, you can get on the expressway and still be lost? I hear so many people from time to time talking to me and said, Pastor, man, What I want is the anointing. What I want is to see revival. What I want is the blessings. Listen, Jesus came to be the way to bring us back to the Father, not just to the blessings, although the blessings will come. Not just to the rewards, although the rewards will come. I mean, I do believe in healing. I believe in blessings. But he has come to bring us back to the Father, not just to the inheritance. If our Christianity is only about the blessings, or the anointing, or the ministry, or the knowledge, or the position, or the status, or the angelic visitation, or the spiritual gifts, if that's what our Christianity is all about, and not a love relationship with the Father, then we are still lost. We are still lost. The elder brother is no better than the younger brother. All he wanted was the inheritance. All he wanted was just a position. All he wanted was just a sense of power. Now, Jesus is not saying that the younger brother was better than the older brother, or the older brother was better than the younger brother. The moment they lost their relationship with their father, they were both lost. One became very selfish. The other one became very severe. (laughs) But both were equally lost because they lost the focus of their life, which is a relationship with the dead. 
Oh, come on, give the Lord a big clap. Hallelujah. Which brother do you identify with more? Are you lost in the world right now, searching for fun and happiness by finding an ever-increasing void in your heart because you're so far away from your ever father? Or are you like the older brother? Have you grown up in church, served in the ministry, and for whatever reason, allowed yourself to become jaded and cynical toward God your Father and His love for you? Wherever you are in your Christian walk, know that your true elder brother, Jesus Christ, is looking out for you, extending a helping hand to pull you through every difficult circumstance into the bosom of our loving Abba Father. For many of us, the love of a father was distant, mysterious, and perhaps non-existent. Without a physical or understanding father, where do we turn? Through Kong Hee's series, Abba, The Father's Heart, you'll understand how the love of our Heavenly Father can change everything, giving you that desired connection and fulfillment. Please visit konghee.com and click on today's offer to get a copy of Kong's four-part message, Abba, The Father's Heart. These four messages will help you connect with the Son of God to understand and find the love that will give you comfort in any situation. Find this offer at konghee.com to get a copy for yourself or a friend. Abba, The Father's Heart. Find comfort through our loving God. I hope you've been blessed today by the Word of God. I'm so thankful for your continual support of Kong He Ministries. Remember that your giving is helping the less fortunate all around the world, in countries and areas that you may never even travel to in your lifetime, but your support has reached these places. It is our prayer that God will bless you greatly. See you next week. Bye! We are the heart, we are the heart.